Here's Dr Laura to explain how lengthening mascaras work. So one of the most interesting ingredients of the mascaras is the polymer-based compounds which are in there. So here we have some polymer. You can see it's quite thick, it's quite gloopy. What you can do is you can dry it out in a thin chain. So imagine if you apply the mascara to your eye, you drag it out, that creates an extra little bit of polymer to the end of your eyelash. It should, in theory, add length to your lashes. So that's the theory, but what about the practice? Time to look at some fake eyelashes in close-up. What we're going to do is we're going to apply some mascara to some of those eyelashes and then we can compare the before and after to see if there's been a change in the length. The key ingredient with the non-chip nail varnish is a group of compounds called film-forming compounds. They create a network of molecules which stick together across the surface of your nail and in theory, should make it non-chip. So product number three, which was the 17, um, has come off an awful lot. There is a clear amount of removal from the surface there, so it hasn't stood up to the test very well. And finally, how will these compare to the product which makes no claims about being chip resistant, the Be Quick? It's actually performed slightly better than the 17 polish, which claims to have chip resistant colour but neither polish has done as well as the Dior, which has won this test. Or the Bourjois polish, which came second. So let's start with the basics. What exactly are they, Dr Laura? The main ingredients are what you'd find in a simple moisturising solution. And if you add some kind of a brown colour, then what you get is an instant tanning product. And there's two different ways that companies go about this. So the first way they do it is they add a brown powder called iron oxide. Now iron oxide is more commonly known as rust. Kiss. Hello. <laughs> first up, the most expensive lipstick, the Estee Lauder. You can see some of that expensive lipstick has come off onto your face. So it's not doing too well so far. How about the mid-range product, the Revlon? Now, the mid-range product has done well. I can't see any marks at all on your face there. The Revlon survived the kiss test, but will the cheapest product claiming to be long-lasting, the Miss Sporty, leave its mark? <gasps> wow. <laughs> A lot has come off there. That doesn't look very good, does it? It doesn't look good at all. Uh-oh. Not looking good for Miss Sporty. Finally, onto the lipstick, which makes no claims about being long-lasting, the Maybelline. Can't see any. <laughs> Can't see any at all on there. That's done really well, actually. So, after the kiss test, the mid-range Revlon lipstick and the Maybelline, which makes no claims about being long-lasting, are in the lead. <laughs>